The successor to the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra, which is the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra, has been finally released after a year. Not much has changed, especially the huge 14.6 inch display and the expensive price of $1200 remain almost the same. What is new however is the processor and a ton of AI functions. So we will unbox this tablet now and take a look at all the AI features. I bought the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra with a pre-order promotion and got the official cover with it. So we can unpack that one too. Inside the large packaging is the large tablet which looks almost exactly like its predecessor and it feels beautifully high quality. Then we have a USB-C to C cable and a power adapter is missing. Unfortunately, this is the case with many devices these days. An eject tool for the micro SD card slot is included as well as for the SIM card if you have the 5G version. Then the S Pen is included so you don't have to buy it separately. This is important to know when comparing prices with competitors from Apple and Samsung. There, the pen costs around $100 extra. As I said, the official cover is also included. It is magnetically attached and looks exactly like the keyboard cover, only without the keyboard of course. We will take a closer look at the keyboard for my final review. By the way, it supports the same accessories as the S9 Ultra does. The Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra is set up very quickly. You can register your finger directly when you set it up because there is a fingerprint reader under the display and that one works quite precisely and quickly recognizes your finger. As usual a few hours have passed since the first videos were recorded and I already run benchmarks, played games, watched Netflix and YouTube and tried out all these AI features. But first, let's start with the design and build quality of this tablet. The body of the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra looks almost the same as its predecessor and you can get it in Moonstone Grey and Platinum Silver. We get a very high quality aluminum body here that is only 5.4mm thin and weighs 718 gram. Compared to its predecessor, the frame should be more sturdy, so there is a slight difference here. It is protected against water and dust by the IP68 standard which is still a big advantage compared to the iPad. On the sides here we have a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port that can also be used to connect external monitors. In addition there is a power button and a volume walker of course as well as a micro SD card slot. At the top there are two front facing cameras, two of them, each with a resolution of 12 megapixels. These are a wide angle and an ultra wide angle camera. On the back there is a 13 megapixel main camera and an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and next to that one is an LED flash. Our tablet reviews are always 100% independent and we would never and have never charged or accepted money for a review. That's why I'm very thankful for our sponsor Samac who makes very high quality and heavy duty cases for tablets from Samsung, Lenovo and Apple. Samac has cases for pretty much every Samsung tablet out there and here you can see me using two with the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9 Plus and Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus. They have several different kinds of covers for most tablets. I have the Samac Mac C Alpha case for my Galaxy Tab A9 Plus. The outside has a nice leather like texture and built in are card slots on the back. It has cutouts for all the cameras and ports of course. Once you open it you can fold the case and flip out the magnetic stand. This way you can use the case as a stand in lots of angles. I really like that the stand is securely held in place by magnets. It's a heavy duty case that should protect your tablet very well including the corners which all the official covers don't do. The case has a hard plastic inner shell, a soft silicon skin around it as well as a hard plastic cover which holds the tablet securely inside the case. For my Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus I got the Samac Ford S Pro case. It's dust proof, shock resistant, scratch resistant and is made from a hard plastic which is covered by a shock absorbing silicone. Included is a frame with a built in screen protector as well as a second frame without one in case you want to use your own. This case has a kickstand built in and you can use a 360 degree rotating handle. If you want you can also attach a shoulder strap which is included. I like that all the Samac cases are built to really protect your tablet properly 
which rarely seems to be the case with all the official covers that just look nice. The Sema cases are very affordable, so make sure to check them out. Links are in the description below. At first glance, the display of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra looks exactly like its predecessor. We actually continue to get a huge 14.6 inch AMOLED with a resolution of 2960 by 1848 pixels. What's new is that Samsung has equipped it with a special anti-reflective coating to reduce reflections. I compared it to the Galaxy Tab S9 Plus and the S10 Ultra actually reflects a good deal less than the previous generation. Otherwise, the display continues to look really good and is definitely one of the best out there. Thanks to the AMOLED, black is really black, colors are nicely saturated, viewing angles are stable, and thanks to a refresh rate of 120Hz, animations look smooth. HDR is supported on YouTube and Netflix. It is generally a very good, albeit very expensive entertainment tablet. The four speakers on the sides are nice and loud and offer excellent sound quality. Really great for watching movies. A peak brightness of 930 nits is achieved with HDR content that is significantly less than the new iPad Pro, which achieves up to 1600 nits. The screen supports active pens, of course. As I said, the S Pen is included and, by the way, is also protected against water and dust by the IP68 standard. It is charged using induction on the back of the tablet. However, it's only needed to be charged for some gestures. You never have to charge the pen for writing and drawing. This is an important difference compared to the Apple Pencil and many other pens, where you always have to worry a bit about the battery. But the S Pen can happily lie in a corner somewhere for days and it will still work, it doesn't need to be charged first. Like its predecessor, the S Pen is very responsive and it's fun to write and draw with it. I keep saying it, but I think Samsung Notes is a really good note-taking app and that makes these Samsung tablets almost unrivaled among the best Android tablets with a pen. Some exciting AI features are also included, which we will look at in a moment. By the way, in addition to the S Pen, there are also two official keyboard covers for the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra, which I will take a closer look at for my final review. But nothing has changed in terms of design, so it's compatible with the same accessories as its predecessor. I already had that one and I put together a list of great accessories for the S10 Ultra here for you. You can find the link in the description. When it comes to internal hardware, Samsung is switching from Qualcomm to MediaTek with the S10 series. While the predecessor still had a Snapdragon HN2, the S10 Ultra here has a MediaTek Dimensity 9300 Plus chipset now, which is said to be particularly powerful for AI applications. In addition, there's 12GB or 16GB of RAM and 256GB up to 1TB of internal storage. The microSD card slot can hold up to 1.5TB of cards. Optionally, it's also offered with built-in 5G. My Geekbench 5 benchmark comparison is pretty interesting. You can see here that the performance is significantly better than that of the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. The difference to the S9 Ultra on the other hand is rather small. The multi-core performance is better than that of the iPad 10 and even better than that of the OnePlus Pad 2, which has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. However, the compute performance is weaker than that of these two. It also remains the case that the Apple M2 chipset is significantly more powerful than the M4s anyway. It is also still a fact that the Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra is still one of the fastest Android tablets on the market and so you can play any game at the highest graphics settings. This also includes Zenless Zero, which looks really pretty and runs smoothly at the highest settings. For my final test, I will test Fortnite, of course, and compare the performance with the OnePlus Pad 2 in more detail. The Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra runs Android 14 with the One UI in version 6.1.1. According to Samsung, it will be provided with security updates until October 31, 2031, so for a full seven years. And in fact, it should also get major Android version updates for seven years. So up to Android 21. That's really long and it's the first time that a tablet should be provided with updates for so long, in Android tablets that is, and that's really great. As I said, the Samsung interface runs on Android 14, including all the features we've known for years. These include the Samsung Notes app, the S Pen commands and the Samsung Dex desktop mode. 
The desktop mode makes particularly sense with such a large display, because you can use it to open and use many apps at the same time and then control them with the keyboard cover using a mouse and keyboard. A whole range of AI features are new and we will take a look at all of them now. We will start with the AI features for the S Pen. You can use the sketch to picture feature at any time with the S Pen commands now. With this you just roughly sketch a picture which the AI then turns into a neat work of art. You can choose between different drafts and then save it as a picture in the gallery. This function is also available directly in the Samsung Notes app. To use it, simply start drawing something in a note, then tap the AI button and you can select the sketch to image feature. There are many more AI features in Samsung Notes. Tap the pen icon with the circuit A to automatically make your handwriting neater. You will even see a guideline when writing so that you don't write at an angle. This works pretty well. If you tap the AI button, you can also use the automatic formatting feature to convert your text into type text and have it sorted and formatted for a to-do list, for example. You can choose between different formatting options. You can also use the same AI button to have your handwritten or type text summarized or have it translated by the AI into other languages. Speaking of translations, you can also load a PDF into Samsung Notes and not only have it summarized by the AI as in similar apps, but also have it translated completely. This way, you can translate English or Spanish documents into German. I once had to fill out very long import documents in Taiwan in Chinese for a tablet that I imported and I certainly would have needed something like that. For some time now you have been able to record voice memos in addition to notes in the notes app. This is useful for example if you are sitting in a lecture and you are recording it while creating a mind map or something similar. Thanks to the new AI features you can now have this voice recording automatically transcribed and then you can work with it and have the AI summarize it for you. Pretty cool. It's also pretty cool that the AI can write messages for you in chat apps. You just write something down in keyword points and then you have it turned into a proper message. But be careful here, the AI has already invented a few things for me, so you definitely have to proofread it. In the in-house Samsung browser, you can also use AI to summarize or translate websites. We've known this from Microsoft for a long time now. Some of the new features in the gallery are also interesting when you're editing photos. Here for example, you can create pretty sketches or 3D characters from a selfie. The AI is surprisingly good at this. You can also use the stylus to edit a photo. For example, to draw a plant in a room that is gen generated. A mass assistant is planned to be added via an update which will then automatically recognize and calculate your calculations that are written by hand. If you don't want to wait for that, you can already do that on any tablet for many years now with the MyScript Calculator app. Finally, a tip to prevent your data from being used to train AI. You can disable online data processing in the settings. However, some features might be lost. Incidentally, these AI features also work with the predecessors. You don't need the S10 series for them. In conclusion, my first impression of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S10 Ultra is very good. I will test it further and compare it with the iPad Pro, Honor Magic Pad 2, OnePlus Pad 2 and a few other devices. It looks like it will be one of the best Android tablets for the next year, but we will have to wait for my final review to know for sure. It's just a shame that Samsung does not seem to innovate much at this point. If you already own the Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra, it's definitely not worth getting the new version. But if you're looking for a new flagship Android tablet, it seems to be a really great choice.